finally, you can now create 4K images easily and completely for free. As you can see here, everything looks sharp and detailed, and it's all generated using just one single model. Hi everyone, I'm Sotai. As you saw in the intro, today we're checking out a solution called DIPE, a groundbreaking method that allows diffusion models to generate ultra-high resolution images, far beyond the resolutions they were originally trained on. Normally, your workflow might involve generating an image first, then using some tool or an upscale model to boost the resolution. But that process often alters the fine details, and even the overall style or color tone of the image. With DIPE, you don't need any upscale tools or post-processing workflows. It automatically generates images at your desired resolution, up to 4K, in a single generation. That means every detail, color, and element remains perfectly consistent. Sounds amazing, right? In this video, I'll walk you through how to build a DIPE workflow in ComfyUI, show you the real-world quality of this method, and share a few tips on optimizing your workflow for VRAM and processing time. All right, let's get started. Okay, let me quickly review DIPE for those who haven't heard about it yet. DIPE is a research project from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem that enables pre-trained diffusion transformers to generate ultra-high resolution images, far beyond the resolution they were originally trained on. In other words, with DIPE, you can make models like Flux or Stable Diffusion 3 generate images at much higher resolutions without losing structure or introducing distortions. Here's a simple example. When you try to generate a 4K image using the Flux model directly, you'll notice it quickly loses control over the image layout, producing distorted or deformed subjects. But once we apply DIPE, Flux suddenly becomes capable of generating clean, detailed, and well-composed high-resolution images that perfectly match your prompt. No weird shapes. No broken limbs. Just crisp and coherent results. All right, and that's what DIPE is capable of. Now, let's build the workflow in ComfyUI to see if DIPE really performs as the authors described. To get started, you'll need to install the custom node that supports DIPE. At the moment, the official version from the original authors is still under development so we'll be using an unofficial custom node built by another developer for ComfyUI. To install it, simply open ComfyUI Manager, search for ComfyUI DIPE, and click Install. Alternatively, you can go to your custom nodes folder inside the ComfyUI directory and run git clone for the ComfyUI DIPE repository, following the instructions provided by the developer. And after installing the custom node, of course, you'll need to download the models and place them in the correct folders to run this workflow. Fortunately, with DIPE, you don't need any additional or separate models. Everything you need is already included in the Flux Crea workflow. You can check out my previous video to see how to set it up and get all the download links for the models. All right, everything's ready. Now let's build the DIPE workflow together. Here's the Crea workflow from my previous video which generates images using the Crea UNET model, paired with the dual clip text encoder that feeds into the K-sampler. The VAE model then decodes the latent space and outputs the final image here. Okay, first let's make sure everything is working correctly. I'll start with a simple prompt. A woman is sitting in the living room. Okay, everything looks good. I got exactly the output I expected from the prompt, though the image does look a bit gloomy, doesn't it? All right, now let me show you what happens if we simply change the image shape to make Flux Crea generate a higher resolution image. I'll set the image shape to 3072 by 3072, hit run, and let's see what we get. And as you can see, the model fails immediately when trying to generate an image at that large resolution. This happens because most current diffusion models are trained only on images with a resolution of 1024 by 1024. When you push them beyond that limit, they're forced to generate results outside their learned distribution, which leads to structural breakdowns and deformations. And that's exactly why we need DIPE. To build the DIPE workflow, we can simply reuse the Flux Crea workflow. Here, we have a supporting node for DIPE called DIPE for Flux. As you can see, this node takes a model as input and outputs a model as well. So all you need to do is connect your Flux model into this node, then link its output to the K-Sampler node. 
Now, there are a few parameters here, but since this isn't the official implementation from the original authors, I recommend focusing mainly on the DIP exponent value. Basically, it works similarly to the CFG scale, determining how strongly DIP influences the sampling process. The higher your target resolution, the higher this coefficient should be. Here's the recommended setting from the nodes creator for different resolutions. Before running the test, there's one more important adjustment. You'll need to replace your VAE decode node. When dealing with large latents, using the regular VAE decode node can easily cause VRAM overflow. Instead, switch it to VAE decode tiled. This node decodes the image in smaller tiles rather than all at once, helping you avoid VRAM exhaustion while still maintaining high quality output. And that's it, that's literally all you need to build the DIP workflow. Simple, right? Now let's take a look at the results after applying these adjustments to our previous Flux workflow and see how well DIP actually performs. And here's the result. Amazing, right? By simply adding the DIP node, I was able to make the Flux model generate ultra high resolution images up to 4K quality. No more distortions or repetitive artifacts like in the previous test. And look at this, even when I zoom in, every tiny detail remains sharp. You can clearly see the fabric texture here, or the subtle wrinkles over there. Everything stays crisp and consistent. So, the base workflow is now working perfectly. Next, let me show you how to optimize the setup to improve processing speed and reduce VRAM usage, especially if you're working with a lower-end GPU. To optimize this workflow, let me show you a few techniques you can apply. First, VRAM optimization. Besides using the VAE decode tiled node, as I explained earlier to prevent memory overflow, you can also use the model quantization technique I introduced in my previous video about FluxCrea. For example, I'll load the FluxCrea Q4KS model here to replace the original Float 8 model. Depending on your GPU specs, you can choose a GGUF model with the size that best fits your system from the list provided. Next, reducing inference time. Just like in the previous video, we'll apply a LoRa to cut the processing time by about 50%. Here, I'll use the LoRa called HyperFlux 1 Dev 8 Steps, set the strength to 1, and reduce the total number of sampling steps to 10 for faster inference. You can find all the download links for these models in the corresponding Patreon post. And finally, to push the performance even further, you can use Sage Attention and Accumulation. Just make sure you've installed Sage Attention in your Comfy UI environment first. However, based on user feedback, some Windows users have reported issues installing this library. So if you run into problems, simply switch the mode to Auto or Disable. Alright, and that's everything I wanted to share with you for optimizing VRAM usage and inference speed. Now, let's click Run and see if our optimized workflow runs smoothly. Alright, as you can see, the workflow runs perfectly. DIP works flawlessly with both my GGUF model and the LoRa. Looking at the results, there's no distortion at all. The details are still super solid, and the overall quality is pretty much the same as before I applied all the optimizations. So with this workflow, you can generate batches of 4K images really fast, even on a low VRAM machine. Now let me show you some of the results I got with this setup so you can see its performance for yourself and apply it to whatever projects you're working on. First, let's start with a simple example of how well this workflow handles detailed object concepts. As you can see here, the image is in full 4K. And when I zoom in, the flower petals still look accurate and realistic. The texture on the lemon peel, the fine lines on the petals, everything stays sharp. This level of detail makes the final image look much more lifelike. Next is a realistic shot of a mountain village market with lots of different objects. As you can see, the items like produce and fruit are placed accurately and logically. Even the tiny fabric patterns or wooden textures, which only occupy a small portion of the frame, still come out beautifully. There's no artifacting at all. The whole image looks impressive and natural, all thanks to generating at high resolution directly within one workflow. And finally, here's a surreal aerial shot of a fishing village. When I zoom in, the distant trees, the houses, the rooftops, they all keep their correct shapes and colors. These flowers here, the ripples on the water, everything holds up beautifully. 
creates such a stunning scene, doesn't it? And those are just a few of the impressive results I got while testing this workflow. If you want to recreate any of these results, just drop a comment below and I'll send you the prompts. And that's it. I've shown you everything you need to build the full DIP workflow and generate 4K images quickly, with amazing quality, completely for free. I hope you watched the entire video so you don't miss any of the tricks I shared. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit like and share it so more people can discover my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Alright, that's it for today. See you in the next one.